Hello everyone, welcome to the first lesson of the Crow Panel Pico HMI Display Tutorial. This lesson covers the following three points. 1. Downloading and installing the Arduino IDE. 2. Configuring the development environment for the Pico board. 3. Using the Pico board to light up an LED. Let's start from the simplest tasks and gradually become tech gurus together. Without further ado, Let's dive into the demonstration. Okay, let's start with the first point. As mentioned in the introduction, the course uses the Arduino IDE. So the first step we need to take is to download and install the Arduino IDE. Open the Arduino website and click the software page. This page has the latest version of Arduino IDE 2.3. Two and a more classic version 1.8.19 but I feel that these two versions only differ in the interface. You can choose the version you prefer to download, but no matter which version, the installation method is the same. This time, I will demonstrate how to install the latest version. In the download bar of the Windows version, there are three installation methods. The first is to install through a XA program, which can customize the installation path. The second is to download a MZ program for installation, which automatically installs using the program's default installation path. The third is to download and extract a compressed file of Arduino IDE that can be used directly. But in order to install more completely and conveniently, I will use the second method for installation, which is very suitable for beginners. Click to enter the EMSI installer download page, click just download. And if you want to support the development of Arduino IDA, you can click contribute and download to contribute. After downloading the installer, double-click it to run it. It will automatically install. This process will take a few minutes. I will speed up this part of the screen. We just need to wait for the installer to finish running, and then the installation will be complete. Then you can see the icon of Arduino IDE on the desktop. After installing the Arduino IDE, we have an editor that allows us to write and upload code. However, at this point, the Arduino IDA is not capable of developing for the Pico. Therefore, we need to install the PicoBoard package to enable the Arduino IDE to develop for the Pico. Firstly, open the course files that accompany the class. These files include the code, materials, tools, and more that will be used throughout the course. If you're unsure where to download these course files, you can find the download link in the course description located below this video. Now, locate the code needed for the first lesson and open it. The code is concise and straightforward, but in order to upload this code to your Pico board, you'll need to install the Pico resource pack into your IDA. Without it, even if you've plugged in the board, the IDA won't recognize it, making it impossible to develop for the board. Click on File. Then open Preferences. Within that menu, locate Additional Boards Manager URLs and click the button next to it to expand the field. If this is your first time installing Arduino, IDE this field will most likely be empty. You'll need to fill in the JSON file link for the Pico resource pack here. I've conveniently placed this JSON link in the folder with your course files. You can copy it from the JSON text file. This JSON file contains the download links for all versions of the Pico resource pack. Once you've pasted the link, click OK. This action informs Arduino IDE where to find the Pico resource pack, enabling it to install the necessary components for development. Next, click on Tools. Within the Board section, locate Board Manager. Here, search for ERP2040. RP2040 refers to the chip used in the Pico board. If, like me, you can't find it right away, it's because the IDE is still downloading the JSON files. Without these files, the IDE doesn't know where to look for Pico resource packs. We need to wait until the download status bar disappears, indicating the completion of the download, before we can search for Pico resource packs. Then, let's search again. Look, now there are more than just three search results. Among them, Find the Pico resource pack provided by this author 
and click to install. It will install the latest version by default, so there's no need to manually select it. Because the installation process can take a while, I'll speed up this part of the video. Once the installation is complete, the status bar in the lower right corner will disappear, and you'll see an installed prompt in the board manager. Next, close the board manager, click on Tools, under Board. You'll see newly added boards related to Raspberry Pi Pico. There are quite a few options here. If you're using Alecros Crow Panel Pico HMI Display, please select Raspberry Pico from the board list, which is the first option. It's fully compatible with our board. This way, the Arduino IDE will compile the code based on the hardware information of the selected board. Congratulations, you've now completed the configuration of the development environment for the Pico board. After configuring the development environment, we can proceed to write code on the Arduino IDE and upload it to the Pico board. Next, let's delve into the code that uses the Pico board to light up an LED and understand how it works. First, let's look at the setup function. The code within this function executes once, immediately after the board is powered on. Inside this function, I've used the pin mode function to initialize GPIO5 and set it to output mode. But why GPIO5? Good question. On the back of the board, you'll find silkscreen markings indicating the pins used for the UART interface, and GPIO5 is among them. For this lesson, I'm not utilizing the UART functionality, so these UART pins can be used as regular GPIO pins. Now, the LED module I'm using is structured like this. The yellow wire connects to the LED's control pin, while the white one is an unused pin. The interface between the module and the board is compatible. Hence, I'm utilizing GPIO5 for this purpose. You can also find the schematic diagram of the board in the course files. Locate the corresponding dimensions. I'm using a 2.4 inch display, so let's open that. The schematic diagram has already divided areas based on functionality. You just need to find the section related to UART you'll see that it matches the physical interface I showed you earlier, with the last pin being GPO5. Now that we've addressed that, let's move on to the loop function. The loop function executes after the setup function completes, and the code inside the loop function runs continuously in a loop. In the loop function, I use the digital write function to modify the state of GPIO5 pin. First, I set it to high, then delay for 1000 miss, set GPIO5 to low, and finally delay for 2000 miss. During this process, the LED will turn on or off depending on the state of GPIO5. But how do we know if it's high that turns the LED on or low? Great question. This actually depends on the LED's schematic. The LED module uses only two pins, one for signal and the other for ground. Since current flows from a higher voltage to a lower voltage when GPIO5 is high, current flows from GPIO5 through the LED to the ground pin, lighting up the LED. When GPIO5 is low, it's at the same voltage as the ground pin, so no current flows through the LED and it turns off. By now, I hope you understand how the code manipulates the LED. Next, let me upload the code to the board and see the results. Click on Tools to check if the board option is already set to Raspberry Pico. Next, connect the board to your computer using a USB-C cable and select the corresponding serial port for the board in the port section. If the board is plugged in but you can't see its serial port number, try clicking on Tools again to refresh the list. Once you find the serial port number for your Pico board, it might show as COM4 here. But on your computer, it could be COM3 or COM6 depending on your system. Select it. After that, you can click the Upload button to upload your code. However, if this is your first time uploading code to a Pico board, you'll need to manually put the Pico board into bootloader mode. On the back of the Pico board, press and hold the boot button, then press the reset button. Finally, release the reset button first 
followed by the boot button. You'll notice a prompt indicating a disk has been inserted. Click on Tools again and navigate to the Ports section. You'll see that COM4 has changed to UF2 board. Additionally, you'll find a new disk drive in your computer or this PC folder, which is where Pico stores the compiled binary code. Go back to the Arduino IDE Select UF2 board in the port section. This will compile your code into a binary file and store it on Pico's disk. Finally, click the upload button to complete the process. Since the uploading process can be slow, I'll speed up this part of the video. Once the code upload is complete, you'll see Done Uploading in the bottom right corner, and the logbox will display the number of bytes written. Next, we need to manually press the reset button on the back of the board to exit bootloader mode and run our uploaded code. You'll see the LED connected to the board turning on and off as programmed in our code. Now, I want to change the off duration to 1000 mirrors and upload the code again. Since this isn't the first time uploading, I don't need to use the buttons on the back of the board to enter bootloader mode. It'll do it automatically. Simply select the correct serial port for your Pico board in the port section and click upload. Okay, that's all for this lesson. If you have any questions, visit the Electro forum and find the Crow Panel HMI display section to post your inquiries. When posting, please follow the format provided below to help us troubleshoot the issue more efficiently. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. It's what keeps me motivated to keep updating. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.